Roger Zelazny may be best well known for his series Chronicles of Amber. Many of his novels make use of other cultures and the mythology of those places. In Lord Demon, he incorporates Chinese mythology. In Eye of Cat, he uses Navajo mythology to tell his story. And in The Mask of Loki, naturally, he uses Norse mythology. However, his most famous standalone novel, and indeed what may be his best work, is Lord of Light. And if I had to pin down exactly what Lord of Light is, I'd have to say Space Hinduism. <laughs> this novel masterfully blends science fiction, fantasy, and mythology to show the strengths of speculative fiction. With sparse prose and a number of mind-boggling ideas, with a hint of Orientalism. This masterpiece of science fiction fantasy has become one of my favorite books of all time. So what is it? Well, Lord of Light is a novel that was published in 1967, winning a Hugo Award in the following year, one of more than a handful for the up-and-coming author of the time, through Doubleday. It was published, and it's about gods, Hindu gods in particular, but really about men, because they weren't always gods. The novel focuses on Sam, who never claims to be a god, but never claims not to be a god, who is a member of the Star of India, which landed on another planet and colonized this planet. To survive the harsh environment, the members of the Star of India used chemicals and electronic treatments to enhance their aspects, which made them more powerful and gave them attributes, whatever that's supposed to mean, <laughs> which are an extension of their strength and will, I suppose. Reincarnation is a common process that is controlled meticulously by the gods and is done through a mind-transferring process. The gods have kept this to themselves to create a caste system and keep themselves at the top of the power structure. The crew uses their powers to subjugate and destroy, setting themselves up as gods in the eyes of their progeny. <laughs> with the locals. These gods are the firsts. They also put a halt to any technological advances in the culture. They're scared that any advance in science will cause them to lose their status and lose their power. And then there's Sam. His followers call him Mahasamatman. I hope I said it right, though he prefers to drop the Maha and the Atman, both of which are terms with significant meaning in Hindu culture. He's a big troublemaker <laughs> and an absolute delight. He becomes intolerant of the ways in which the gods control everything and introduces space Buddhism to logjam the whole system. He revolts against this system and takes down all the gods he can in the process. He doesn't want regular common folk to be stuck with diseased bodies or forced to be put into the bodies of animals, as is the current way, but instead for everyone to have access to what the gods have. In some respects it is a retelling of how Buddhism sprang off of Hinduism, the oldest religion in the world with rich characters fulfilling different roles of Hindu gods such as Vishnu, Ganesha, Shiva, and more. This novel, this reading experience is unlike any other. The dialogue moves the story so effortlessly and enriches each character's inner life so well that you hardly realize the way that time passes in the novel is back and forth and all around. Jumping around from moment to moment, the character of Sam is always in some kind of trouble, whether he's possessed by a demon or taking on the whole pantheon. His efforts are always going to excite new and old readers. One powerful piece of dialogue comes at the end of the first chapter, which comes somewhere in the middle of the story, and it states, it is difficult to stir rebellion among those whom all things are good. There is no room for evil in their minds, despite the fact that they suffer it constantly. 
The slave upon the rack who knows he will be born again, perhaps as a fat merchant, if he suffers willingly. His outlook is not the same as that of a man with but one life to live. He can bear anything, knowing great as his present pain may be, his future pleasure will rise higher, if such a one does not choose to believe in good or evil. Perhaps then beauty and ugliness can be made to serve him as well. If such a one does not choose to believe in good or evil, then perhaps beauty and ugliness can be made to serve him as well. Only the names have been changed. This whole speech is at the heart of the novel's themes and plays out again and again. I, for one, look forward to my next adventure with Roger Zelazny because Lord of Light, although problematic with its Orientalism, is the kind of book that makes the gears start to grind in your mind. And you can't ask for a better book than that. So, thank you.